Asalaamu Alaikum guys and welcome to Smile to Jannah. Before we get into it, I was collecting for Gambia and mashallah you guys absolutely smashed it. Now guys last 10 days these two organizations are very close to my heart. Why? Because I've worked with them, neither of them have asked me to collect for them but I really do think what they're doing is very important. Removing misconceptions about the deen on a grassroots level and it's Ayera guys and Salaam because things are getting rough as you're gonna see. <laughs> this week in the dunya, what's been going on? Let's start off with everyone's favorite yeah, the milkshake revolution. Now that has not ceased. It's where anti-far-right activists are using the humble milkshake as a form of protest against far-right individuals like Tommy Robinson, this Carl Sargon of a card guy and of course our good friend Nige. This has gone too far mate, to such a degree that the police had to tell McDonald's to stop selling their ice creams and also their McFlurries as well. But that did not stop our intrepid and courageous protesters. One of them took his business elsewhere but he still managed to get the job done. Don't look at this guys yeah, he took one for the team. There he is guys, he sacrificed his life so that we could succeed. Now this was a picture that was taken after he was doused by the beverage. Let's have a look at his face. I don't know about you but that is a look of regret, frustration and banana. <laughs> Alright guys let's move on to the next one which is the elite favourite. War. Now I know what you guys are thinking, war is bad and you're right, to people like you and me war is bad. But if you look at the structures that we have in place, for example the banks, banks love war because they can lend money to both sides. Corporations love war and then consequently the governments also have to love war. Why? Because they get employed by the banks and the corporations yeah and they have to keep them happy otherwise the big bosses can get rid of them. But before you can start doing the war you gotta get people to agree to the war. Yeah like Noam Chomsky said you gotta manufacture their consent. You write in manufacturing consent that it's the primary function of the mass media in the United States to mobilize public support. Because it's us after all that have to actually do the war. There's maybe 80% of the population uh, whose main function is to follow orders and not to think you know and not to pay attention to anything and they're the ones who usually pay the cost. So how do you sell the war? Well you gotta use propaganda, you gotta constantly make them out to be a threat. But who's them though? Well to the western nations it's only the terrible trio. Iran, Russia and China. Now of course you've been hearing about Iran yeah, they've had sanctions put on them, literally crippling their economy, there's been boycott of their oil, and now Donald Trump is threatening to wipe them all out. Some people jump on Twitter, post a picture of their sandwich. Donald Trump decides to jump on Twitter and threatens to nuke an entire nation. Now Huawei yeah, which is owned by China, leading the technology against 5G. They are in the middle of the new row between China and the US. Because let's face it, you want to cheese anyone off, you hit them where it hurts. Corporations have long been used by governments in their political strategy. Let's look at BP, that was the reason a democratically elected leader of Iran, Mossadegh was removed. Now you had the East India Company, a corporation from the UK that went to India to sell stuff but they uh, ended up facilitating UK rule of India for about 200 years. But if you look at the top 25 companies guys, about 50% of them are US companies. If you want to talk about threat to security, you know Siri on Apple, that was actually developed by the US Defense Agency DARPA. Alright guys let's move on, Tommy Robinson still on the trail for the MEP, I think the election, elections are done now but this interview was classic yeah, you could tell he spent half the night memorizing this response. Beyond an uprising what are you actually trying to do? I'm trying to galvanize and politicize the working class. But what do you want to do and achieve for the Northwest? I'm what What does that mean galvanizing the Northwest? Mean, what will that it mean, achieve? It mean, it, it, Oh noble leader, Tommy, I don't have enough money to feed my family. My family unit is falling apart. I'm addicted to prescription drugs. 
What do I do, Tommy? What do I do? To galvanise and politicise the working class. Oh, uh, thank you, oh noble one. All right, guys, let's move on to the next bit of news. The Indian Donald Trump, Modi, has won the elections yet again. He only pushed two main things, number one national security and number three making Pakistan pay the price. Now this is the classic using fear and hate to win votes. The Pakistani PM congratulated him on his victory like he had a choice. And this was absolutely classic. On the one hand they're congratulating him that he's won but on the other hand they're like You know what? Are the nukes still working? Yeah? Let's, let's just double check that they're still working just in case things go wrong. Next bit of news. As the month of May draws to a close so does Theresa May as the Prime Minister of the UK. Talk about perfect comedy timing mate. A lot of newspapers were reporting that she broke down in tears. This clearly dispels the myth that she was a robot yeah. At least we know she wasn't a robot yeah. Because think about it, she's crying now but why didn't she cry when the people were being burnt to death in Grenfell? Or that mishandling of the Windrush victims? Or people having to sell their dignity because of universal credit? And of course denied institutionalized Islamophobia in a party. Why didn't she cry? I mean let's face it, after her now Boris Johnson. Yeah Boris Johnson is set to be the next UK leader. For God's sake mate, had you sorted out Islamophobia in your party we wouldn't have to deal with this now. She's left the country in a bigger hole than it was before she came. I've spoken about the humanity of those who have suffered as a consequence right. of her policies and I wish the news would give far more space to them rather than spending uh, time discussing the Prime Minister crying because she can no longer hold the most powerful job in, in the country. Alright guys that was a short summary of the main bit of news that caught my attention. Don't forget like I said to donate to Salam and Aira. links in the description. Until next time guys. Salamu alaikum.